finally, let me show you an example of a definite integral involving exponential functions. So let's look at the integral from 0 to square root of 2 of x e to the negative x squared over 2 dx. So notice that the power on the exponential, our u, is negative x squared over 2. So taking the differential of that, du will be negative 2x over 2 dx, which is just the same as negative x dx. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about that because I have an x dx. I can make that adjustment easily. Let's go ahead and figure out what our new bounds are going to be. For the top bound, if x is equal to the square root of 2, then u is equal to negative the square root of 2 squared over 2. So I'm plugging in x equals square root of 2 right here. So this is negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. And if x is equal to 0, which is my lower bound, u is equal to negative 0 squared over 2, which is 0. So my u bounds are from 0 to negative 1. So now let's plug it. Let's see if we can make a substitution. First of all, let me just rewrite my factors in a different order. Since I need a negative x dx for my du, I'll multiply it by a negative, which is like a negative 1 here and cancel it by multiplying by another negative one outside. It goes negative one times negative one is one. And now it's translating. Negative x dx is the same as du. e to the negative x squared over two is e to the u. When x equals zero, u also equals zero. When x equals square root of two, u equals negative one. So I have negative the integral from 0 to negative 1, e to the u du. Now if you think it's odd to have 0 on the bottom and negative 1 on the top, you can swap those, provided you change the sign as well. And now we can finish the problem. The integral of e to the u is e to the u. Since it's a definite integral, I don't need the plus c. So that's taken from negative 1 to the 0, to 0, which will give me e to the 0 minus e to the negative 1. But remember that e to the 0 is 1. So I get 1 minus e to the negative 1.